side. Hello, and welcome to Deicide. I'm your host, Dean Machine, and I'm joined by all these names around me. But first, but first, we are going to start with our Q&A with High res Bart. As we do, we're making it more of a tradition to just basically answer questions with Bart at the beginning, so that way uh, he can go on and do his things, and then uh, we can just be left to our own devices here and not hold him from his own stream and duties. So, Bart! Bart! Questions we have to ask right now. There's two immediate ones that, that just must be answered. One was the stacking girdles. Stacking mm. girdles. Stacking a tier one, tier two, and a tier three girdle can happen. Yes. Not intended, right? Um, no, as I understand it, it was not intended. So, um, just I guess it, it, for the sake of transparency, um, you asked me that, I, I guess, for those of you out there that don't know, uh, Demon Machine, uh, who I may call John periodically uh, throughout this broadcast, um, will be is the admin for the European Weekly Tournament. And he hit me up asking me, hey, is this intent? You know, it, I have basically told teams you cannot, uh, you know, do, do the stack and girdle glitch. Um, and I told him, no, it's working as intended. That's how it's supposed to be. I was wrong. I did not really understand exactly what he was saying. Um, so at one point, many moons ago, it was you could stack girdles, um, meaning that the effects would stack. This was also the case with Heavenly Agility um, and not Creeping Curse. So, like, there were some that we had cherry-picked and been like, it can't work for this. But for most of them, it did work. Um, so what I didn't fully understand was that he was saying that that Tier 1 would not stack with Tier 1, but Tier 1 would stack with Tier 2, and 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 so on and so forth. So that is not intended as a bug and uh, and should be fixed. Now, there, what worries me about that is this... Well, what's good about it is that the same tier don't stack, which means that you aren't going to get into situations where you can buff someone up to like 140% healing or whatever using Heavenly Agilities. Yeah. Um, however, you can do probably some tricky stuff with Girdle. Um, so I am not 100% sure if that made it into this patch. We're, we're planning on a patch this week. I'm not 100% that it made it in. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what that ping noise is, guys. It's that, not was, my end. that was uh, uh, Pon Pon, I guess, muting people to try and find the echo. Uh, uh, can you actually hear that? <laughs> yeah, it goes dink. Yeah, it goes dink every dink. time you mute someone. And dink. well, you oh, really? muted me. I thought me. that was on my end. That's all right. So, so um, oh, moving forward, you know, if, if it is not cleaned up for this patch, which I hope that it is, uh, and I'll be able to confirm that on my show when I am looking at the patch notes, um, which we will be doing a patch note preview today if it is, everything goes according to plan in the next thirty minutes. Cool. Um, we'll have the answer to that. If not, it's safe to assume that um, it, it is not going to be allowed for competition play. Okay. Good, because like, yeah, it was that was a confusing day. <laughs> yes, yes, it was confusing because I mean, it was. I mean, Sio, you even said you're like, if that if they allow this, I'm not even playing. <laughs> Sio, Sio says that about everything, though. To yeah, be he fair. does. He does. Is that right, Sio? I guess he's muted. <laughs> I feel like I might have <coughs> muted everyone on accident. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty <laughs> sure Sio has. Just, <laughs> he just quit the chat and has not <laughs> unmuted him. Well, like. Why? Why can I mute everyone? I thought that would be like on my end. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, look at him in chat. <laughs> hey, what is this? I cannot talk on mute. What? I'm out of here. <laughs> right, someone unmute Sio. For the I think he's just got to hit it himself in the top. Yeah, he has to hit it himself. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. If you didn't know, Sio, uh, Google Hangouts will mute you if you type. Yeah, that too. It's friendly. Oh, like I think that. it auto unmutes oh. you. All right, now the other pressing question that came up today. Root is intending on playing in the EU tournament this weekend because they're not going to be able to participate Saturday. Is that is that acceptable? What what is what is our ruling on that? The really? rules state that a team can register for one region every week. Okay, it does not have to be the same region week over week. Um, this will change moving forward. Um, mm -hmm. Insofar as that, eventually we will be looking to run monthlies, uh, eventually quarterlies, yearlies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, Obviously, the weeklies for now are, are what the plan is. Um, but obviously, once we move to a where there's monthly finals, you wouldn't be able to compete in multiple regions. It'll be region locked for the duration of the tournament period. But yeah. for now, when it's week over week, yeah, you can uh, if you prefer to play in high latency for some reason, then that's an option. Okay. All cool. right. So, so wait, wait, wait. I just have one question though. Mm. If, if they sign up for the EU tournaments, their seating will be. Crap, right? Like, That's right. Yes, they yeah. will be the lowest yeah. seed. They have they have no seed points. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, we'll be we'll be coming in basically as the as any normal kind of any other first week as part of that tournament team. So if okay. if 
you know, the guys from Victoria's Secret came back together with Young Bay and you and decided they were going to make a new team, then it would yeah. be a similar to how E-Lemon was, right? You came in with zero C points. So Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions about that, Sayo? Mm, no. Are you going to participate this weekend with Root Playing? Uh, yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. If it's not stated in rules that you're not allowed to, they are allowed, I guess, so yeah. there's no problem there. Yeah, it is. It is actually specifically provided for in the rules that you can you have to register for one region per week. Uh, specifically, yeah. if someone did have a conflict and still wanted to play, um, and I see uh, Ray can ask an interesting question that I, I don't have the answer to this moment. That will take a little bit of thinking. Is hmm. will they if if there's 33 teams, how will the teams be chosen? The rules provide that that that. It's admin discretion, but that the first metric is team ELO, um, and that the higher ranked team would be. It, it basically the the in descending order, the most important things are the rank of the team, and uh, in the game client, and then the order in which they signed up. Yeah. So if if the gentlemen from Root are listening, I would strongly suggest if you are intending to be part of the European tournament this weekend that you sign up very early for it. Uh, lest you know you do run the risk of getting if you know last minute decide to play in it you do run the risk of not making it in if there's too many teams um, but in most cases I imagine we haven't gotten to the point where there's been over 32 teams interested we did get pretty high though yeah um, that was actually a question that I had to I mean I guess it's if there is 17 teams do we want to go ahead and run a 32 team bracket to add that's, that one more team that's where it's like oh but they're just, yeah, yeah. It's you know I'd, I'd say let's cross that bridge if and when we come to it. But in general, it hasn't been the issue with the EU, right? I mean, it's kind of been closer to twenty has been kind of the over under mark. So yeah. at that point, I think it's worthwhile to run thirty two. Uh, yeah. Seventeen is a little tricky. Yeah. Okay. Cool. What other questions does chat or anybody else have for Bart? Um, God, there's something else I wanted to ask you. I forget what it was now. So, the stacking will either be fixed or put in a rule. Um, yeah. We talked about the root thing. Um, Can I ask something? Yeah, that's why I asked for questions. <laughs> uh, Bart, are you sitting in a corridor? Um, yeah. Pretty much. Okay. So, there's... I can show you, let's see. Behind me, that leads out of the building. And that's, like, there's, that's a bunch of computers um, that have just come in. For new developers, and this way is the rest of the office. In the bathroom. <laughs> no, the bathroom's actually outside of the office. That that right there, that door right there, is where I stream from. Oh, okay. And then, so my desk is right outside of that, and then the rest, I'm basically on the far right end of the office, and there's like one exit door there, and then moving that way is like developers, and then there's a break room, and then, yeah, it's that's the rest of the office that way, so. Okay, cool. So you were the first one out of the building when it's on fire. <laughs> uh, no, I'm probably the last one in the building was on fire because I'm stuck in a closet to broadcast. <laughs> and oh include the Guan Yu bug is on the list of fixes. Uh, let me just preface the answer to this question with competitive players play this game a lot. In general, and, and this is something that we ran into often with High Rock, they would have bugs that they would just kind of sit on and rage about for months and then be like, are you ever going to fix the Guan Yu bug? And I'm like, what's the Guan Yu bug? But specific example, are you ever going to fix the Aura bug? Hyrak, what's the Aura bug? If two people have sovereignty, they cancel each other out. No one ever reported that. <laughs> like, <laughs> so please, Siphon, what is the Guan Yu bug, sir? Is this, is it have to do with, is it the knockoff thing with Fenrir? I, that was fixed, I believe. But what, uh, what's the Guan Yu bug? Hmm. So basically, all you pro players, you need to actually submit bug reports, not just or complain just about it. just send me an email. Just no, like, we got to complain about it. Well, no, <laughs> complain about it too. That's all well and good. But like, at least be like, hey, this is broken. <laughs> I can be like, yeah, you're right, it is. Or like, no. Fix one this. use, one oh, use oh, first right, 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 right. Okay, the maintainability, no mana cost. Yes, that'll be fixed. So that's, um, I just didn't know specifically what it was referencing. There is an issue. Um, I think that was hot fixed, but some things are still a little broken. So there's, the problem was, um, there was a bug with ISIS that you could fire her number one and then cancel it immediately um, before you shot the first ball. 
And you could do this in quick succession in such a way that you would actually net more run speed because of the run speed buff that ability gives you. And it wouldn't consume mana until a certain point where the ability had fired. Um, so there was a fix that was put into place for that that had unintended consequences, which was that some abilities certain, simply would not cost mana to fire uh, if they were channeled-esque. So like Guan Yu's drum roll, the Anubis Plague of Locust being you know, easy examples. Hmm. Um, and then there was a fix put into place uh, which would occasionally, which is what is live now, I believe, that also had some unintended consequences, which was that I believe some abilities will cost double the mana to fire now. Um, I think specifically like Berserker Barrage for Thor, you may have noticed. Uh, the first time you use it in the game, it can cost double mana sometimes. I believe this is going to be cleaned up in the next pass. Um, but that's, uh, yeah, that's, yeah, not consuming any mana. But, like, the thing is, it, Flare Brute, if you test it, so the local client, which is what you run training modes in, does not have the fix. So you will still see them taking no mana. In live, you will have, because it has to do with how clients are patched, but basically we were able to fix that without patching in live, but your local client does not, is not going to work. Interesting. Um, so if you look at it in local, you'll still see those abilities cost no mana. In live, though, it should be mostly cleaned up with the edge cases. Sometimes they will cost double mana. Um, if that's not fixed, I'll certainly let you guys know uh, before moving into the tournament this weekend. So, you know, if those, those gods become lower priority because there's the potential that they're bugged out in terms of mana cost of abilities. Or in the case that some things are simply not working, there's a small potentiality that some gods will not be available this week if they are indeed broken. Cool. When will we make that determination, I guess? like uh, That'll be... I mean, I'll see the patch notes here in half an hour, and I'll, I'll know what made it in and what didn't. And if, uh, if not, you'll see the rules updated, and I'll get that over to you guys. Okay. End of day today, most likely, and that meaning, like end of clock day, like probably around like 11 p.m. So Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, just as long as it's before Saturday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's yeah, really yeah. important. <laughs> it'll, be during, it'll be this week for sure. Okay. Cool. Questions? Anyone else have questions for Bart before we kick him off to do his own thing? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, someone oh, brought oh, up a oh, question. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, yeah. I, I was just going to ask you, Bart, um, how many applicants have you got for the new Smite game stream? Um, I would say probably close to 15. One five. Okay. okay. That, would be, that would be my guess. Um, I, I'm not, like, looking at it right now, but, um, I mean, there were some people that, like, were already being considered that were, like, on record for a long time and been like, hey, I want to do it, hey, I want to do it, hey, I want to do it. Um and not all of those people sent an email, so inclusive of them, yeah, probably 12 to 15. Okay, cool. So you guys just shaking up the streaming schedule, or? I'll tell you all about it in about an hour. Okay, cool. Oh, man. <laughs> Pond, Pond's, are you nervous, Pond? Pond, are you <laughs> I hope I don't get booted. I think I have an idea what's happening. I think I know, but no, I, you should, I it's on. It's, it, Pond, I believe it's on Podia. Is it? I think oh. so. I think, okay. I think Gavin was sending out emails about it and everything, and you can check that, but... Um, for now, it's radio silence until uh, it's fully announced. Yeah. Okay. But no, you're you're gonna be you're you're not going anywhere, Pond. Yes. <laughs> and it, it's really because the, you have a nice cat. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, without my cat, I would be nothing. Without your cat, you probably yeah. Uh, I mean, you'd have five viewers every sub day. Sub a thousand viewers, mm -hmm. and yeah, it'd be tough. It's hard out there without cats. Yeah. Oak, Oak to strong. My advice to all streamers: get a cat or a puppy. <laughs> oh yeah. Um. I'm doing it. <laughs> oh, first you gotta get internet. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Compass asks, sometimes your ranged auto attacks make the animation looks like it's hitting you, but deals no damage. I don't know what that is a question or. A yeah, I s see. Uh, or is that something you guys know something about? Don't worry, like calls. You got banned, Flare Boot? Why did you get banned? Uh, yeah, I mean, whatever. Uh, Hades on her invisibility bug on her no, I don't think. I mean probably, but Hades yes. Uh, auto attack stuff. Yeah, all right, that's the stuff. And I saw like heart bomb and that kind of stuff. It's possible that there's a bug in which that is the case, like where like sometimes it just won't work flat out. Um, my my best guess as to what's actually going on there is that your client and the server are not agreeing that you got hit by that ability. Huh. Uh, and, the, and, and the game is, is server authoritative, meaning that if someone shoots a heart bomb and your client says, that hit me, 
and the server says, nope, you were actually one tick to the right, and they missed, it will still play through everything on your end, but you will take no damage. All of the damage numbers come from the server. Oh. So it's, it's in most cases, it's probably because you're playing a latency, and um, your client's not up, is not, is, you know, because the latency represents the amount of variance between your client and the server. So, you know, if you're playing at 110 latency, you know, 110 MS, and you're 0.1 seconds off of where the server thinks you are, that could be enough in some cases to miss skill shots or to have skill shots play their effects as if you hit them or were hit by them when in actuality you were not. Neat. Um, one question was, are, when will the servers be, servers be region locked? I guess getting EU servers as NA is pretty frustrating. Or, like, with the server preference, it doesn't seem to make a whole big difference. Like, you, you say, I prefer NA servers, but, you know, after you get in queue, it's like, well, we're playing on EU. Yeah, there's there's two problems, right? Like, obviously, there's the problem of, for many players, they would prefer to have longer queue times. Mm -hmm. Just just flat out, don't care. I only want to play NA. Specifically in ranked. I mean, that's where it's most frustrating, right? Is when, you, when you've when you waited some amount of time, you want to play a try-hard game. Yeah. You want to, you know, want to really get into it, and you're playing on EU. Um, as an NA player or vice versa as an EU player. Um, that, that in and of itself is its own special kind of hell. The, um, the, the other kind of piece is, is, has a little bit to do with feedback, right? Which is like, it would be really nice to know that you're playing on a European server before you pick on her yeah. uh, as an American player. But at the same time, you, know, you kind of have this, this a little bit of a dilemma as a game developer, which is like, do you really want to display that information to the user so that they can then abandon the lobby? And you know what I mean? Like, if it's like, oh, I, I get match made at 3 p.m. and I'm on EU, and I know that before I select my god, screw it, I'll just desert and make a new account and play one game and crush somebody and then come back. Like, you kind of set yourself up for a little bit of that. So, um, hmm. But it does display your, your network latency in the lobby sometimes, right? Like, I think it's kind of borked right now. Like, something broke that. So we're, we're kind of we're, – we're aware of the frustration, I guess you could say that, and, and are looking for the best solution. Um, my anticipation is that if you guys make a – just raise a stink about it on the forums. I see a lot of, like – I see a lot of bitching about it in, like, the, the Smite channel, and, and I don't mean to be derogatory by saying bitching, like, complaining, how or whining, however you want to call it, but giving negative feedback, I don't, I don't, you know, however you want to classify that. But that kind of stuff is better placed on our forums um, if you want it to be seen by – the guys that make decisions. Uh, alternatively, Reddit, but Reddit's not as reliable as our forums would be for, for specifically for things like feature changes. Uh, are you guys considering bigger punishment for Dodgers, especially in ranked? Because as of right now, you get three, four leaves in a ranked game in ten games. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's something that we're, we're constantly kind of evaluating the best way to do it. I think that ultimately, the only answer always has been the peer review. I mean, it kind of always, you know, that you have to you have to have incentivization to not be an ass, and then have. I think the amount of punitive stuff that goes on around levers is is fairly appropriate. I think it's more that there's no incentive to be not a dick, um, yeah. and then you know you need more, and then I think peer review. I think, I think that in all cases when it comes to community management, you can look at Riot and be like, they really did it right. I mean. Riot is a, is a company that has almost as many community managers as they do developers. Maybe even more at this point. But like they have like a couple hundred community people on staff. Whereas we have a couple. <laughs> so, yeah. um, you know, in, in terms of like that kind of thing, like can we have someone review every time someone leaves the game? Like a player gets supported three times for leaving and then we're going to, you know, do this tribunal process is a little bit unwieldy for us. Um, but we, I mean, not to say that we don't review, every band is reviewed by a person, um, but, you know, you don't get that kind of immediate satisfaction of, like, this player's been removed, removed from the eligible to play, you know, ranked games queue for a week as we review his account. Like, that, that's something we want to work towards, of course. Um, I mean, there's a lot of companies that do this really, really well. Uh, um, SOE does it fairly well. Riot does it very well. Um, so we're getting there. Um, and and we're, we're aware of that being a concern for players, certainly. Yeah. Uh, I actually wanted to ask you... So Kelly has joined you as esports manager. Is her title? She is her official title is esports coordinator. Esports coordinator. Okay, so you are just still good old esports manager, right? I am the pinnacle. Okay, so what does that? What does she do? Like you know, what does she do that you don't do or you do do? Like you guys just basically share responsibilities, trying to <laughs> coordinate things, or he said do do. 
<laughs> okay, sorry. Um, uh, uh, um, wow, Bart's the professional, though. Um, s- specifically around Kelly's role, it's it's going to be um, coordination with with the teams, um, trying basically to get to reach further down um, the uh, kind of the list of teams, I guess, as it were. Um, so that you know, we have we have more feedback from more teams because obviously I only have so much bandwidth and so much time. Yeah. And you know, this Mike Captain's chat is not inclusive of everybody. Yeah. Etc. 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 So, um, just just having another kind of contact point for teams. Um, she'll be a little bit more involved probably on the community esports quote unquote side than the the full on esports. I mean, she'll she'll kind of straddle that gap, I guess you could say. So, you know, the the BLG casual competitive pet. <laughs> casually competitive tournament when you're running that, uh, like Eden Grounds Arena tournament, those types of things. Um, she'll be more the, the the point for that while I focus more on on the kind of 1% of 1% uh, high-end competition stuff. Yeah. Okay. She'll be someone involved with prizing. She'll be streaming. She'll be doing some amount of asset creation and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so just, just general being around. Cool. All right. Any last questions for him before we... Because it is 2.40, you need to get over to your other stream prepping time. I'm not out of the loop. What am I out of the loop on? What, Denial? Yeah. Oh, no, I know. Okay. Well, you said DLG Casual Well, competitive. The, the Casual Competitive Tournament. Uh, but if yeah. you, I don't know if you guys are still running that as that or if you're going to... We're going to put it under Denials. We're going to do uh, some sort of week, week-based week tournament, like during the weekday. So oh, okay, okay. Cool. Something that can... More, uh, the, more of the kind of ladder stuff that you were talking about before? Yeah. Then? Something that'll... Basically, that you can do that's not on the weekend because the weekend's kind of tied up. Well, at least the Smite Game Channel is. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, um, yeah, we're uh, and and like I said, I think I posted on the Reddit thread about Restarian. But um, yeah, congratulations to you guys. That's I know oh. that's a big move for you guys. Well, thank you, thank you as well. And 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 the exciting thing is that with Stefano announcing his retirement, that means Restarian's got a really good bid for the best hair in esports. <laughs> 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 oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! I'm glad Spray liked that joke. <laughs> I fucking ha- I fucking hate this. I mean, uh, I, don't, I mean, um, I freaking. really hate. Yeah, I freaking hate hate this here. <laughs> this is going. <laughs> oh oh God. boy! I gotta right. watch my language if, if, if I'm gonna ever be like a, st- a, st- a, st- a, st- a streamer of some sort. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. We'll see about all that. <laughs> All right, well, looks like we're going to go on to the rest of the show and start answering questions for us and stuff like that. So, Bart, thank you for joining us. We will let you go and do your things unless there's anything you would like to say before you go. Sure, I'll, uh, I'll knock out this last question I see from Kret. Is plans to bring unused quote-unquote items in a line like Ankh and Hydra's Lament? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, yes. I mean, kind of with the change to the active abilities and the rate at which we add gods, changing items is a little bit scary. So it'll probably be a bit slower mm-hmm. than some of the other stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, we are definitely looking at that and considering there's kind of like a, there's always like a, some amount of email chains floating around. Like what if we had an item that did this? And obviously there's some, there's some obvious things, right? Like we should have the inverse of the, uh, what the hell is the name of that item? Mark of the Vanguard. Is that right? No, the um, wall of absolution. Right, you should have like the, you know, the the magical protection item that gives you physical damage, um, yeah. per stack or, or whatever. Um, yeah. You know, something something like that, and and yeah, you know, Hydra's Lament's kind of garbage, and Ankh the Golem doesn't really fit very well, and you know, it Ankh the Golem has been, I think, is the most changed item in the game. That thing was like has gone from like being like far and away the best item to buy on anything physical to like. <laughs> I, I guess you get Gauntlet of Thebes. <laughs> like, I, you know, like, um, so. Uh, and then Flare Boot asked a question that I'll go out on here, which is, uh, I guess, more up to you. But smurfing and casually competitive events and, and assist, I think that moving away from that specific system is more kind of the plan than, than trying to enforce that stronger, if I'm not mistaken. And, and Demon Machine, I'll, I'll leave that to you. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in. Please follow and support all of these guys. And, uh, and remember that, uh, you know, there is, there is another world out there besides Twitch. It's called Azubu, and Silas streams there faithfully. And, uh, <laughs> does run a, a uh, I got a moderate amount of viewers, man. Yeah, I know, I know, not I know. Too bad, though. It's not too bad, though. Yeah, people do go do go check it out because I, I watch your stream occasionally, Sai, and I think you do a really good job. <laughs> so I like I like to call you out because I know that uh, I know that 
it, it can maybe it's frustrating trying to build a community on a on a smaller kind of website, but I yeah. think you do a really good job, and, and your team is worth it. And, and you know, and, and you guys are you know when, taking down tournaments now in the EU scene, and once again, <laughs> yeah. once again back on top. So should, should have maybe waited like a few days till Minsik talks to Alex if I could maybe do this three hours on Twitch. But eh, we'll see, we'll see. Well, you know, yeah. you know, you never know. <laughs> you never yeah. know. Yeah, so yeah. I was one of the people that I definitely reached out to to be you know part of the you know as I said we were looking for streamers, so um, I think. I think he's a good cat. I think I think you do good work, and I really I really like. I think it'd be really fun to have some another person like Pond up there that's more of that's very invested in kind of the theory and the you know trying to kind of shake the meta up with with niche picks and stuff as SK tends to do. So yeah, we'd love to have you if, if we can make it happen. Yeah, sweet. All sweet. right, friends. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you once again. And uh, if you need me for any reason, feel free to email me at Bart at HighResStudios.com or you can find me on Twitter, twitter.com slash HighResBart. Thank you, Demon Machine, for running a wonderful show. Thank you to all the panelists for being here. And a special thanks to Spray Arn for, you know, being you. Laughing at jokes. Yeah, la <laughs> laughing at my jokes. <laughs> laughing at your jokes. All right. All right, guys. Take it easy. Thank you, boy. Later, man. Bye. <laughs> awesome. So now I will get the overlay set up because Bart's not here. So we can actually, you know, not have it ruined as soon as he leaves. <laughs> So, welcome to the rest of Deicide, where we will discuss things, Hello. answer questions. Um, and the first question I wanted to yell at people about was, why? who cares about smurfing in, in casual tournaments? The hell? I mean, it's like, that's like the, the most rude thing to ever do, is to smurf in a casual tournament. Yeah, what it's a scumbag. Rude. It's yeah, not I don't like, get the purpose of it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just rude. Because, like, at like best, you might just stomp someone. At worst, someone finds out, and now you're, like, known as the asshole. Yeah. And so it's, like, it's just... There's no point, too. It's scummy is the best way of putting it. It's scummy. So. All right. Well, we are here with all of our lovely panelists. What kind of questions do we have for them? We did want to talk about... Uh, I want to make sure that is, in fact, Sprite. Yeah, that's Sprite. And that's Dread. I want to make sure I get... Oak is upset. Oak uh -oh. is wrong. I apparently goofed. What'd you do? I don't know. Goofs. Does your cat have allergies? Not that I know of. Oh, does he go outside? Uh, occasionally. Oh, okay. My cats are like indoor-outdoor cats where they, they spend a lot of time outside too. So One of them's starting to lose some of his hair. And I think he's either have allergies or he's stressed. But he has no fleas and he's he's clean. He's just losing chunks of hair. It's weird. Anyway. Or he, he might be getting old. <coughs> no, he's like three years old. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, we'll go to our lovely tournament winner's image, or video, which I updated a little bit. Ooh, look at that. So, on the NA side, we had Root Gaming coming first, Snipe Gaming coming second, with Curse coming in third. And over on the EU side, SK still reigns on top, with E-Lemon taking in second place, with Denial Esports EU coming in third, which is actually, in fact, BLG EU, because uh, we have now, of course, as most people know, left BLG to go to Denial, and it's the staff. I mean, BLG's still there, but we're no longer on it. So, it, it was a very, uh, what's the word? Uh, everybody was happy, you know. It was a good move for, like, everyone involved. Anyway, so... Root taking the top over on NA is, I mean, it's, nothing's really changed in the past few weeks. It's just second and third place keep changing. <laughs> That's yeah. about it. We can't have a same second and third place ever at all. So. Well, we did have that for quite a while, though. Like, it used to be, like, Curse and Root, you know? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it was Curse and Root battling it for first a lot. So, Bonbon, bon, tell us what's going on with Curse. Are you you're a sub now on there? Yeah, I decided to be a sub. Okay. So, uh, who took had... your spot officially? Um, officially? Or like I think zero. Because like we had such a huge swap, it's really just whatever lanes decide to work out. And I think zero guys plays a shadow key right now. Okay. I subbed in for like a few scrims, and each of those scrims we did well though. And it seems like they're doing well overall. There's just some like cleaning up on like calls that they have to make. Okay. Like I was I was in um the mumble with them in their match against Snipe. Yeah, so there was like two calls that like I like looking back on I went and saw and like had the call been the exact opposite, they would have like probably won that game. Hmm. But that just comes with time and practice with the group. Yeah. Uh Kupar wants to know the full roster of Curse at the moment. 
uh, zero shadow Q best KO and mace to the face, which is shadow Q's brother. Cool. Okay. That's good. That's good. And so you're just playing support whenever some one of the or support you're playing sub whenever one of them can't be in there. Have you had to play support yet? Uh, no, I haven't had to play support yet. I'm really terrified of the day I have to because <laughs> I, I get what you're supposed to do with support, just actually doing it at a quick pace mm. and well is the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So what did you think of the uh, the girdle stacking? Do you think it's something that needs to be fixed, or is it like, oh, I mean, it's a viable option because you, I mean, you do have to spend a lot of money to get three different tiers of girdle, and it's kind of a, I want to say niche pick, but it's so strong. I mean, I was watching the replay when they had two girdle stacking. It was a level two and level three, and his it, the Hades magic power went from two ten to four sixty. Um, it's just like, <laughs> I, th I wow. think it's something that should be removed or at least have a diminishing return on it because Girdle already get, is really cost efficient in the stats it gives. Stacking it twice just kind of breaks it. You're, you're getting right. something that's like equivalent, if not better, than a fire giant. Yeah. Which you is terrifying. Three times though. Yeah, it's terrifying. It's better. Yeah. It's, better. it's better than fire giant. 100, uh, no, what is it? 40%, 160 AD or something? Or 120 AD and 160 AP? Like crazy yeah. as fuck. It, that's something that just shouldn't be in the game because they're like, if it was for like a very like small specific comp and you could predict it coming, you might be able to have a counterplay. But a lot of comps like can like get away with being grouped up enough to like get it off, and it's you shouldn't be able to get a fire giant for like pretty much free every single fight. It's too much. I agree. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, Dreadout, do you have any opinion? I think it's way too strong, and like uh, the duration is like ten seconds, so it's long enough for a whole team fight unless you disengage well enough. Fair enough. Very true. Mm -hmm. Um, so what other things do you guys notice lately that's broken that needs to be fixed? Anything particular? Sayo, with your lovely odd picks and mid. Fix. <clears throat> Mm. Agni, since the game was released, I don't know. What don't you like about <laughs> Agni specifically? <laughs> Agni is just the strongest god in mid. That I don't know, like if Harris doesn't realize it or people doesn't realize it. I'm playing it shit, like though. This is why I don't play it. And I uh -oh. hate to play it. Like I really hate it. Like I hate uh, Hebo. But it's like these are the two strongest mid gods. The from the AP side at least right now, and Agni with the ultimate at five, like nothing is able to beat the Agni. Maybe a hell with Stone of Gaia. But, uh, I would say Hell beats Agni. Yeah, but if you don't go full AP defense, like, you know, the magic assist, then I don't know. <laughs> a good Agni shits on a good Hell. Not really, to be honest. Yeah, okay, maybe not on you, but <laughs> on me at least. Nah, nah. No, no, I, but like, I think Agni is just too safe, is the problem. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, the next yeah, thing, he's yeah. also too safe. Yeah, this range bomb. His damage is also too crazy, and the stun, man, like, even his stun is laying down for so long. With Gem of Iso, late game, this is a zone, man. It's like an AoE zone. Like, <laughs> so over the wall, you can, like... If they if they decrease the range on his ultimate, would that bring it more in line? Is that kind of what you would want to see as a what? change? His ultimate, get, like, add mana to it and maximum one stack and make a bit more damage. So he can only use it, instead of spamming it three times, he gets two or just one? Make it make it ten second cooldown. Um, one time usable, ten second cooldown, give mana cost to it and finish. Or 12 seconds, I don't know. Maybe a bit more damage, but he doesn't really need it. Like, But to spam this stuff like in late game, when you have like Tahudi and uh, Obsidian Shard, and it's basically enough. Uh, late game, three times, and you hit three times on a carry, it's 80%. Yeah, that's true. And you can hit it AoE, so if they are balled up, GG. Did you hear what he was saying? They just cost mana. Yeah, like the I meteors. said, like they should they should make it like uh, 10 second cooldown, one Meteor, a bit more damage, and the uh, cost mana. No, 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 no. Oh. Yes. What do you think, Spray? I will just make his uh, overall DPS in in fights even more. Like that, that will be even more scary. Like what he needs isn't a damage increase. He just needs his ult to cast a little bit mana, and, and he's good. Because it, 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 why is he good like... then? He will still not run um. He will still fuck him mid lane and alter as anything. Not if he. Why, what would it change is... if you add mana? 
if his ulti costs mana, he, he will not be able to spam it as much. He will be able to do Sure he would, like you just go like three mana potions, like year two is not much mana. You clear the wave with year two even, like really early, like at level seven. You just need the passive and year two and the wave is gone. And like you could add like a lot of mana, yeah, but not like a little. Like maybe 150 on every every ultimate. This would be appropriate if you have it like that right now. 150, like uh, Eo Kwang Tornado on max rank, I think. So, basically to where he has to decide, do I want to use bombs yeah. or do I want to use the rest like of the skills? He, he should not be able to make a full burst combo, I don't know, this is just too much damage. If you really hit everything, like a full um, like a full dash, uh, the second spell and all three ultimates, it kills you. Like, there's no way of getting out if you don't build full tank. Even if you're a hell, you don't survive it. Okay. Hmm. Any other people agree, disagree with that? I I have to d d disagree. Like, I, I I think Agni is really strong. Like, he's probably one of the best APs in game. Mm. But at the same time, if you nerf his ulti that much to get 150 mana each ulti, you will nerf his overall lip aiming phase a lot. <laughs> yeah, you, this they'll, is what you need to do. They'll just yeah, skip but, him and get Poseidon there. Any other god? Yeah, but it, it will be like you will nerf him to the point where I think people will not. To the point when you, you'll need to think what you do. Can, but yeah. right now it's brainless. Go Agni mid, hit yeah, level yeah, five, yeah. outrace anything. That's right now. But then you need to use your brain. Like, if it's like a 10 second cooldown, add like let's say 90 mana to it, but it's on 10 second cooldown, so you don't can spam free meteors in any situation. Like you know, just one harass 10 seconds. The enemy has the time to sustain it back, you know, like, yeah. but right now it's just ultimate stun, two, dash through, ultimate, ultimate, dead. If you don't yeah. have an Aegis, or if you cannot dodge it, you're gone. But then, I'm, even if you Aegis it, you still, he, he gets them back so fast that he can probably do it before the Aegis comes back up, right? Um, I, yeah, I'm sure, worried. Sure. I'm worried that making it so that you don't have those, like, spammable meteors will just make him really passive, because you might just go to a new Agni where he walks forward, waits until you're, like, in a bad position, and the meteor's on top of you, and then just plays back. And it turns into this, how many meteors can I hit in lane before you just have to leave, rather than being aggressive. I, I, I think there's a better solution available than nerfing his meteor. What Do you do? You have an idea what that is? Uh, I, I, I honestly think they need to remove some power from his 2 and his 3 and bring it to his 1, and make choosing to use stun with your 1 versus leaving it out be more of a choice. I don't know exactly how you'd accomplish that, barring adding like an additional effect to the gas cloud and making it way shorter. But I, I feel like it's just there's too much on the, his two, three, and four, and the the gas cloud is just kind of there for his stun. Ha I, I I don't like the concept of having a skill that you just don't level, barring um, the first point. Hmm. And it, it's kind of good that late game you can get a gem and you can use it as a zoning tool, but that's cheesy and that's not fun to play against. Yeah. And that's not even really fun <laughs> yeah. to do from your perspective. It's just like, oh, that seemed kind of silly. Mm -hmm. I got way too much for free for no work. What if they made the stun scale or, like, at level one it's Point this is what they could do, seconds. yeah. They could like add damage when it ex when you stun someone. Yeah. Then it would make sense to make it reduce it to one meteor. Then you could do a lot of bursts still. Like if it if the stun triggers, you do like let's say uh, ninety damage with forty percent scaling rank one, and then like go up to three hundred fifty or something. And you could remove some of the damage on the two and the three and the four to compensate the fact that you're doing damage on the detonate explosion. Yeah, yeah. or and you could just remove the three that. meteors and make it just one meteor. So. Because when you just remove a bit of damage, you still have the free meteors that are crazy as fuck. Like, this is the main I, problem, I think. I, I think if you remove some of the damage, though, it won't be nearly as bad. You won't get full comboed. And if you don't get a stun off, like, you can still stun, stun certain people. But right now, even if you only stun one person, you can still get a ton of damage off on everyone else. If you remove the damage off of, like, the 2, 3, and 4 and move it to the 1, now you're rewarded more for using your stun well and getting multiple people in it. And you also can't harass and do nearly as much damage without it, which is one of his big problems. I, I think that would be an elegant solution that would make his one feel more fun to use. And also add some counterplay to him. Because right now, any fight around Gold Fury or Fire Giant, it's like, oh, I Meteor poke you. And yeah. that wouldn't be fixed by making a single Meteor on a 10 second cooldown. I want to say, though, I want to say that the one should actually be nerfed a bit. Um, not the damage, but how long it lasts. Oh, yeah, definitely. It, it lasts for, I'm not sure exactly how long, but I think it's up to 8 seconds or more. I think it's 10. Yeah, I think it's yeah. 10 too. Yeah, 10 seconds. Like, that's extremely long for a spell that can that I can apply uh, 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 ISO effect, you know. 
Like something if, you could do if, is if you step inside it, you will be slowed. And it's a ten second spell. Like it's it's a bit too much to be honest. If you okay. Ask me. For uh, any of the new people that might be watching, can we run through his skills real quick so they know what we're talking about with one, two, three, and four? I mean, mm -hmm. what do you got? Because I don't even remember all of his spells uh, in order. Uh, Agni is one is the gas cloud, and it okay. basically puts a gas cloud on the ground that does very small damage yeah. to anyone standing in it. And when you use any fire spell on it, or like flame path through it, it stuns you, or stuns the enemy that's in it. Uh, your two is a just a cone fire, or a line fire in front of you that does damage to anyone in front of you. Your three is a dash, where you dash forward a decent amount of distance, and you leave a fire trail behind that burns anyone in it. And your four is your meteor, which you can tr you can store charges of it, and you can, like, in a decent range from you, you can just call down a meteor to strike a location. Yeah. Cool. Because, I, I mean, like, for me, I, I knew all of the spells, I just don't remember what order they're on, because I never play them. <laughs> I think my help, my Hercules guide is wrong right now, because I think I got the one, two, three, four wrong. <laughs> I think I mixed up heal and his pull. Yeah. I mean, you just do it, you don't think about it too much. Yeah. So... Anyone else? I, oh, go ahead. I just think maybe another thing you could do is remove the damage on Noxus Flame. Like, remove the tick because, like, there's really no point for it to be there. Make the duration way shorter. Give it a scaling stun and give it a scaling damage. Could it, uh, I mean, does it already apply combust onto it? Like, the burning? If you get stunned uh, with it? No. Uh, it doesn't. It, it I think it's just on two and ultimate. Yeah, yeah and your next ultimate. cast of flame or rain of fire doesn't even work on your path of flames, yep. your dash. Hmm. So what if they made it, if you ever use the Noxious Fumes to combust on somebody, it would apply the dot effect and then lower the damage mm -hmm. in other areas. So that Well, I think if you added like a burst damage onto the one for stunning someone, you could definitely get away with using combustion. It's just, generally you're going to get the flame wave first or the ultimate first, and having it double stack, like, because you're, you're yeah. like already, like two ways to ignite the, the explosion kind of already give combustion. Yeah. So I don't okay. know. Fair enough. Fair enough. I think they could change the guess, so like it still has the damage per tick, and uh, if it gets, um, like if it burns up, you activate it for the stun, the r remaining damage from each tick w would be applied. So you, you can either use it as a zoning tool, or you can use it for the damage. I just don't think he needs a zoning tool. I, no, I think removing does. the noxious fl fumes would make it so you don't, you can't do the gem of isolation zone, and it also means that you can't like easy stack up your spear. You already have a good amount of ways to stack up spear. Spray, I, I what just, are you doing? You already have good enough zoning tool with like your path of flames as a dash away and rain of fire as like you can range stun slash like anyone running towards you, you can just hit with it. I don't think he needs basically. A, he he has a more effective Alquang tornado right now. Hmm. In terms of zoning, not damage, but zoning. Yeah. Because you put those gas down and everybody stays away. If I went yeah. through that, I'm going to be stunned. So I won't. Any other gods that you have anybody has a serious problem with that needs changes? Mm -hmm. If Spray will stop okay. molesting his microphone, no, he's so, done. Sorry. Sorry. I guess uh, I don't know what happened. But... You're like dragging it across the floor and stomping on it? No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm good now. So anyway, Neja. Neja. Yes. Neja. He needs nerfs. He needs nerfs. Yeah, now the people have learned how to play him. He needs nerfs. I didn't get the buff. <laughs> I, I, I can't understand why they buffed him in the first place. He is absolutely destroying anyone who gets close to him. Mm -hmm. He deals most damage than any other god in the game. He bursts you down in like two seconds as a mage, as a tank. As anything, you die if yeah. you get close to, to him, her, her, him, him, him. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, but he he needs damage nerves. Okay. He, he needs too much damage. I think it needs to be on his passive. Like, there's no reason to hit for 500 crits at like level eight to nine. You you yeah. can do that because you're essentially giving it a times four multiplier in your auto attack damage, because you, you're getting free crit on your two, and you're also getting times two multiplier on your final passive. It shouldn't be. It should be like one, one, one point two five, one point five scaling. And I think if you did that, he'd be perfect. Hmm. I think it's just too much that he can hit that hard that early. With his auto attacks, it's too strong. Sayo, do you have an opinion? Yeah, it's way too strong. Is that why you like running your mid? Him mid? Yeah, just pick the broken shit and win. 
<laughs> yeah, Pretty much. Exactly. Fair enough. Yeah. That's so what are you guys going to do when the game's perfectly balanced? Are you guys just going to suck this or what? This will never happen. You, you don't want perfect balance anyway. Yeah. You want you want some things to be slightly more powerful. Yeah. Be because then, like, let, let's say one character is slightly more powerful than everyone else, but two gods that are, like, slightly weaker slash balanced counter that god, they immediately become viable. And you get, like, this really interesting, like, automatic meta shifting. Like, without the game needing to be patched at all. Okay. And that's who, what you strive for. Who counters Naja? Anything that freezes or stuns? You mean? Uh, tons uh, Hebo, of CC. Range to these. Range to these. In lane. Range to these and Hebo. Yeah, what could you do against the Neath if you dash in with your free? She just uses free. When you ultimate after, the range is exactly, like, not enough. You would need, like, free... Um, no, like, free steps to get close. And you can land the ultimate on max range on the Neath. And then she's probably already under the turret, so that's not viable at all. And if you get close to her and she doesn't have the jump, she just roots you. And then she still has her um, attack speed slow, and then she still has her ultimate to stun you. Like, there's no way of killing an Eve with Nisha. Like, no way of winning even, because she's out pushing you. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that just be like, what about side lane Nisha versus Neath? Is that what would you want to the get same. to complement? I mean, you have like a tank that can help you or peel you off, but I think it would be the same if. The Nisha is playing like ah, I mean the Neef is playing carefully okay. with the tank would be the same. Like well, Enher is the same as as Neef, but with Enher, Enher you need to hit the stun, you know. But if if you miss the stun, it's gone. Like you're gone. That's the only. Hmm. But with Neef, you just jump out like. <laughs> every spell is basically countering. <laughs> every spell is basically countering a melee man. I, I think the best the best way to counter Naja is just to not let her get him get fed early and maybe potentially get a kill because Naja early game is the weakest point. But if you ever let the game go to the like all Naja needs to to, to have is level eight and boots finished and like rank one soul eater, and not only does he have like the fastest jungle clear in the game, he also has the safest jungle clear and he doesn't ever need to go back to lane. Spring. And so if you didn't if you didn't shut down Naja in the first eight levels, Naja can't be stopped. Because Naja will get farm and will mm -hmm. start. And the next problem is that she can insta kill someone at level two now with the buff on 150%. If you get the red buff and red pot early on, and you are managing to hit your free, you deal about 60% damage. Spray yard, what That's are you doing? Oh, um, I'm just leaning on my keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I don't know what this. <laughs> I don't know why the CC skill got the like 150% scaling. Yeah, that's it's completely weird. Uh, um, uncalled for 150%, man. You get about 100 AD level 1 with the red buff and the red pot. I think it's 96.2 or something. 150%, it's 150 damage, and I think it's 70 base. So you get like 220 just with the dash in and the auto attack. That's 60% of the health. Then you use your 1. And then you can follow up because he got slowed. You got a movement buff, and you use your second, and then the third is already a, a scaling auto attack, and he's just dead. Like pff, I, nothing, I nothing. I kind of like. Do. I kind of like that though, like because all you'd have to do to like counter that, like I think that they should do with like red pot is they need to make it so you have a very defined particle effect on you, and they need to make it so that it doesn't last as long. Because imagine like. It, you should be rewarded as a player for seeing that they've got red pot and being like, oh, I just won't fight you for the next minute and a half, and then like now I'm like 800 gold ahead of you because you did a really gimmicky strat and I saw it. Right now, you can't act like if they pop that red pot, you can't tell. Yeah, unless, uh, yeah. Uh, unless they do uh, it when they're like, in the lane. Passive, I just zone someone in mid if he goes passive. Like, that's yeah, the but... best, the easiest way to win. Like, that's if someone really goes passive against me early game, I just completely zone him out. Well, that's why I say shorter on red buff because otherwise you can just do that whole zoning thing. But if it's if it's a short gimmicky thing that if you realize and just play differently for like a minute yeah, but to if, a minute if and a half, this is in, like, you then I just ahead. pop the red buff uh, when I go in. You know, oh. yeah, this is what I need, would need to do then. Like then I would need to, like what I tried. But they actually, would see it on I, you, and they would they would because, know that you are yeah, you know yeah, that's sure. a possible thing. But then I just don't use it and still zone them because they go passive. Yeah. And then if they go aggressive, I use it and jump in. You know, it's always like risky, and it's always you cannot tell what what is better. You know. Yeah, but that's, but that's a my thing guess. that I want would like to Harris to implement is that you have collision with your own words because I tried it because I saw a Reddit post about Nisha one popping off of words or jumping off of words, and I think he meant enemy words though because I tried to go like uh, words level one, like push the wave under his turret. And then uh, just place a ward under his turret, use my wand and my free to go in and kill him because it would bounce off so many times that my free would just insta kill him at level one or level two, I mean. 
Wait, does that actually work? Can you pop it off your own? No, this is... Oh. No, I was, I was so mad when I found out. <laughs> it would be so amazing. Wait, like, well, you, you, you can do the same as Zeus. You could just be like, Herp Dirk, yeah, change this. Like, yeah, oh, <laughs> you, just, no. you just push him out of the turret, ward, and use your one all the time. Like, this is so strong. Would be so strong, but... Well, it's weird. Words game. count as champions because... Uh, I don't know, they're coded like gods because when you're Thor, if you reveal enemy wards, if you can see them, you get the, your Thor passive. What? Really? Really. What yeah, the yeah. fuck? It's, what? it's really strange. It works. <laughs> they, they, anything, pretty much anything that has to do with champions or gods uh, like applies with wards. Okay. okay Wait, that's so you were saying that if you have a ward, you place it down as Thor, you get the bonus of having an extra god with you? Yes. No. If you place a ward... Him. Again, if if you like, let's say they have ward at fire giant, and you ward it, so you can see that ward. Yeah. If you play Thor, why you see the, your, the enemy ward, you get a bonus. If you can't see the enemy ward, you don't get a bonus. Oh. Oh, because I, I thought, okay, it was actually quite a while ago, but when um, Hyrule played Thor, he actually put a ward down when he made it, and he got like super more DPS. No, uh, that's probably because he invaded. And they yeah. were there. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah, but like he got the passive stacks from them and the ward as well. That would I that would have had to been like way long ago because I, I I did this recently and it's only enemy wards. Okay. Unless they had warded for some reason. I mean, I guess you can bounce off your shit of enemy wards though, because you can also auto attack them. I guess they have collision then, but it's sad yeah, that it's, it doesn't it's work weird. on their own wards. You, you can bounce off enemy wards if you see them. Yeah, mm, they yeah. they showed yeah. it in some video. Yeah, sure you can you can also like um, when there's an enemy ward, you and can it's use a stun on it, like and you, you, you dash with so back towards it, you get stuck at the ward. <laughs> Lol. Yep. Mm. Yeah, it's like the Loki stuff. But I know for a fact that it works that you bounce off the Loki decoy and the enemy Loki. That works. With Nisha one. All right, so we actually have our first caller of the day. Uh, yes. Are you there? And can everybody hear him? Hello. No. Hello. Oh, yeah. You guys can hear him? Uh, All right, just wanting to know everyone's opinions on what would you think about bringing back Raw's double tap? No. Uh, no. 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 But at, like, lesser scaling for his one. I mean, don't the keep the only... damage the same, but, you know. It was so buggy and it was unreliable to like hit unless they were running directly backwards. And sometimes even walking forwards, depending on your model, you would get double hit for like no reason. And unless they could code it perfectly, I wouldn't want to see it. Okay. Mm. Fair enough. I mean I can see But that if they did get it perfect, <laughs> then what? No <laughs> <laughs> It's still a tough choice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, it, it just like <laughs> it's just no. It it's just so random. It, it's the fact that it's so RNG based that it's like I, I do you do do shit damage or you do like and everything and then everything dies. You know, it's it's not good. Design. If it was coded reliably, very maybe, but like <laughs> it just feels weird. Like why why is that skill double hitting versus like. Agni uh, 2 double hitting like it just it doesn't seem like it would double hit like I'd rather it like have like separate particle effects like something that would be more interesting would be like if did you ever play uh, Gunbound with the mage the little guy that shot like a helix thing uh -oh. and if you hit where the helix intersected it did double damage that would be far Ooh. more interesting so imagine like a helix laser and if you uh, cross cool. them that'd be kind of cool and that would make sense that you took double damage that sounds but, like a good thing for a new god Raw yeah. laser just doesn't like it. Just feels weird that it double hits. <laughs> no, that'd be an interesting thing for a new god. Imagine seeing your your target indicator has like these starry points. That's like you know, here's the three spots that you can do double damage when you hit them. That would be awesome. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. Yeah, that would be interesting because I mean, then you have to. I have to shoot it right when he gets there. I mean, which I guess a lot of it would be either super duper skill or a lot of luck. A lot of luck. A lot of luck isn't bad. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Pond Pond Luck is uh, definitely um, something that you, you're very familiar oh with. Oh my god, if you didn't see my stream this morning, I played Tank Collie, and I stayed Tank in a Collie. fight against four people with 200 health for 15 seconds, and ended up turning the fight because my team got there, and I got a Hell Heal from 100% to 400, dropped back down to 50, and then got Isis healed back to 500, and we turned the fight. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was what you wanted to do in every competitive game. 
<laughs> Tank Kali is OP. All right, one Sorry, more question. Man. What would you think about having a god that is similar to Anti Mage from Dota? No yes. thanks. I don't know what Anti Mage yes. is from Dota. No thanks. <laughs> Basically, on an auto say... attack, he drains some mana and does damage based on the mana he drained. Yep. That's yeah. I don't like that. I would like to yeah. see mana drain as a concept. Yeah. But. Uh. It'd be it'd be cool. I, I I wouldn't mind it depending on how it worked. Hmm. I will. Because I was a because... no, I was a fan of like old Wit's End, which I believe did the mana burn in League. Yes. I, I was a fan so. of that item. Uh, I wouldn't mind seeing the person with like a steroid auto attack that drains mana. That could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Something similar, not completely like Anti Mage, because he's really strong. But uh, Any you know, something like similar. He's really OP. Yeah. I <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, but like, what's that? You cut back actually, up to me? I'm all the way over here now. <laughs> yeah, but like, I will actually like something like a, like that thing because what he can do is he can counter someone like Hebo or Hell completely, or like like Raw, like like someone that only focuses on on their spells to do do damage. You can you can completely counter those by like sticking onto them with someone that has that effect. And. I feel like that that's a really good idea to be honest. To have something to like completely negate that effect. Like like a mage who has like lots of MP five, can you spam my builds all day? And and, and never go. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. But they wouldn't be able to I do like a ton to of damage then, would they? Because if they were never ran out of mana then it'd be kinda yeah. overpowered. They would have well, to be, be like Lassandra that just got released in Well you can't League. like well like the thing is like hell late game doesn't go oom. Never. Like yeah. hell will not go oom. It, it, it doesn't matter if if you build MP5 or not. You will not go oom. Like unless if you're like basically spamming all your builds every second that they're like off CD, you will not go oom. So yeah, I definitely feel like having something that can like negate that effect will actually be pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you, Mesmerize. Do you have any other questions? Um. Not um, that guy? Uh, excuse me. Not that I can think of. <laughs> alrighty then. Well, we will. Can, alrighty then. We'll I've we'll do some machine. DBZ smite later. I yes. want to say I want to say something. Do, do you cast? We're uh, going I to work. I casted the casually competitive twice now. I think, but I'm I'm kind of newbie at it. Please, uh, please just really improve on casting, because <laughs> like your voice is by far the most marvelous thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I plan on trying on it. Uh, me and Damon are gonna. Try to get some casting in together so I can yeah. learn. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, Mez and I stream daily, well, almost daily, and uh, so we're going to. I'm going to start getting him into casting. We're going to cast together, try and get uh, all sorts of nice things going along. So I'll talk like this when I'm doing stuff with him, so I can sound similar. Yes, you know, do this. Yeah, he just got <laughs> a little bit more bassy than I do. I just got to change my microphone settings. Who knows? Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, so yeah. DBC Maybe Smite. Nile gets that sponsorship from Sennheiser. You can get a mic from them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. I want, I want a really, really, really nice microphone. I know. I should be like, hey, right now I'm uh, pretty much advertising for Audio Technica. <laughs> your free mic. I'll uh, tell them about you. <laughs> That's where I've heard your voice before. You do the ad thing. He does the yeah, machinima so videos do. that we That's do. That's exactly <laughs> where I've heard. I'm like, where have I heard this before? Are you below 1,000 ELO? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'll have to play some of those. Uh, in fact, send me the link for those when you have the second so I can play those for the... Sure. Granted, I guess it's not the BLG Mentor system anymore, but we'll play it anyway. No, because we're we're going to have to redo it for denial. Yeah, we'll have to redo it. But that's fine. And of course, I mean, Pond, have you seen the Machinima videos with the God's Pool uh, Party? No, I haven't. <gasps> oh, jeez. Bart played them on stream for me yesterday. Yeah. And everybody was just blowing up the chat. <laughs> People were so oh, confused. Man. It's it's very funny. Um, well, cool. All right, so now that we are woefully off topic, uh, yeah. thank you, Bez. We will uh, talk later. Okay. Yay. I'm going into the jungle. Oh, God. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, I guess that about wraps up our show for today. I don't want to keep it running for, for, for forever and ever because... We could do it forever, talking about balance and discussion and strange tactics. So what I want from you guys is to tell us where we can find you and various things like that, like Spray Yarn, 
Where can we find you? On the internet, you just don't do anything. You have crappy internet because you live yes. in 56K land, is what you claim, even though that is impossible. But! You can find me in a farm here in, in uh, Sweden. <laughs> but otherwise than that, you can also find me on Twitter. I'm going to link it in chat afterwards. Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, what else do I want to say? Um, shout out to uh, Herbie. Shout out to Jerby. <laughs> yes. Does it have something shout to do with a bird? No, like, <laughs> just shout out to him because he was a really nice guy. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, All right, cool, well, you're done. Dratow, yeah, do you have anything you'd like to say with you and your, your pleasant fossil tones? Uh, you can find me on Twitter, and I'll post a link later in the chat. And just a shout out to Smack for being an amazing laning partner. So, are you officially a part of SK now, or are you still just subbing? Nope, I'm just subbing right now. Sayo, when is this going to change? Uh, as soon as the contracts are signed, I guess. Okay. So, is it like something that's in the, in like, the works? Yeah, it's in the works. Okay. Okay. That's fair. I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't like, I'm just going to play with you forever, and I'm never going to get any of the benefits I get from you. <laughs> no. It's in the works. It's in the works. Cool. All right. Uh, Sai, where can we find you at? Yeah, I already posted all my links in the chat. Um, like, it's facebook.com slash psyolol, and all the other stuff is for SK Gaming and basically my stream. And for shout-outs, I want to make a shout-out to SK Gaming, all their sponsors and partners, uh, to my team especially lately, uh, playing very well. Uh, to all the fans, and also to Demon Machine, and I guess to Nile Esports for hosting another show of Deicide. Oh, well, thank you. Oh, it's, it's just me. Denial's not <laughs> yet. I haven't decided if I want to give it to them yet. <laughs> it's my baby. Okay. Um, Pon Pon. Uh, if you want to find me, I can go into post all my links <coughs> right there. I have Twitter, I have Twitch, and then I have I stream on two Twitch channels. And there's going to be an announcement on the Smite Games channel coming up here, which I, I just got the email as to what's going on, so I know a little bit ahead of time. Mm. But it's it's going to be cool. Uh, yeah, that's all my links. If it's what I know, if it's what I think it is, then I know about it too, and it's going to be interesting, and I'm going to be very happy. Yay! Yeah, it'll be interesting. Um, I also want to give a shout out to uh, like Shadow Q and all the people at Curse who are like working really hard right now and trying to get the team going. They've been putting a lot of practice in, and they've been s slowly and slowly like getting like really like good together. And so I'll, I'll be interested to see how they perform like the next two tournaments. And thanks for hosting the show, and thanks for everyone who like came for coming. Yeah, it's good talking. It is. We got to do this more often, like every week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I see what you did there. I see what I did there. <laughs> Yeah, except we need more people on camera. Sayo, you need to talk with your SK guys about like letting you be on camera. <laughs> about the gaming gear? Yeah. I am Yeah, very yeah but sorry. they're still not settled, you know? And if I show stuff like right now and like ahead of time and they maybe have already something coming and then the sponsor sees this and then they ask SK, hey, why did you guys have this shit, you know? Yeah. Well, so here's what you do. You stuff. put a cloak, you put a hoodie on over your headset. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but still, That's all you it's do. like... Fair enough. All right, well, we'll let everybody else go now. Uh, if you want to stick around, we'll, we'll probably chit-chat for a few minutes after we end the show. But what the hell are you wearing, Pum -pum? thank you all for joining us. We'll, we'll talk about this in just a second. Uh, let me do the outro, and uh, we'll be right back. <laughs> Is that a wig? It's a wig. Oh, Hold on, one second. One second. You guys are terrible at going into outros. God. I'm sorry, dude. Look at Pump Bun. I know, he's wearing a wig. Ah, it's not like he's having a baby or something. That's, there we go. Now he looks like George Washington. <laughs> I swear to God, he looks just like George Washington. 